All right, first of all, I have a, what direction is it? It's that way. <laughs> I have the definition for energy at the top of this page, just to remind you to keep checking yourself. Like, does it make sense that this, that energy is the ability to, to do work and that work is force times distance? Like, just keep checking yourself. And really, I think that there are three main categories of energy that we're going to look at or consider in this class. And I, I don't know if this is an official way to sort the different types of energy, but I, for my brain, it's I think it's helpful. I'm going to give you the big categories first. And I'm going to tell you that we're going to name seven types of energy or se seven categories of energy. And this list is not comprehensive. So I've, I've picked the kinds of energy that are, will help us in this class or help us with biological concepts. So the first kind of energy we've actually already talked about, and it's a big category, like many other kinds of energy sort of fall under this umbrella, and that is the energy of movement. Go ahead, think about, I know you know what this is. It's kinetic energy. And remember, we talked about kinetic energy when we talked about molecules and atoms. We were in chemistry land and we were talking about that the speed of the molecules, their own like kinetic energy was, um, we could measure that by measuring temperature. And all atoms and molecules have this kinetic energy. They're all moving. so. Kinetic energy is the energy of movement. So anytime something is moving, it has kinetic energy. Our other um, big category, and I'm going to put this, I don't, I wish I hadn't numbered them, or maybe I will, will number them. This is number three. I don't know if I like my numbering. I'm probably going to want to renumber it after we get done with this. Kinetic energy, to me, energy of movement, is sort of opposite of something called potential energy. And that is truly like, it really is like possibility. It's energy and waiting, stored energy. Let's call it stored energy. And that should mean absolutely nothing to you until we look at some examples. Um, and I, I can't help it. I think we should probably look at our examples. Um, gravitational potential energy is the energy that, you know, if you have something, you're holding something above the ground, it's not moving. It's not doing work on anything, but if you drop it, it will move and it will possibly, it could, it could apply a force to something as it's moving and do work on that thing. So gravitational potential energy is an energy of position. If you're at the top of the hill, you have a lot of gravitational potential energy that potential energy gets transferred into kinetic energy, transformed into kinetic energy. And we'll talk about energy transformations, which are super cool as well. But to me, gravitational potential energy is the most, um, I don't know, the most intuitive kind of potential energy. But the other one that is probably more important for us is chemical energy. And chemical energy is a form of potential energy, but it's energy, and again, this is like, this is weird, and we'll talk about this in more detail, but it's energy, um, it's stored in chemical bonds. Put a fork in that one. We're, we're definitely going to come back to it. There's a reason that I numbered this one and three, because I'm going to put number two in here right now. And this one, 
I, I feel a sadness. I have a sadness to name this one because I have absolutely nothing to say about it except, oh my gosh, it's super cool. <laughs> Light energy. I have no idea what it is. It's the ability to do work. I can't visualize that. I, I have no idea. Light energy, you're on your own. However, light energy, think about a biological system in which light energy might be super important. Well, all of our biological systems, almost all of them rely on light energy from the sun and the process of photosynthesis, which takes that energy from the sun and uses it to build sugar molecules for us to eat. That's all we're going to say about that. There's going to be this like light energy fuels all these other kinds of energy, light energy fuels living systems. Awesome. We'll see it a lot, but I can't tell you like what it is. I think it's a really weird one. I look forward to my oldest son going to college. He's going to study biochemistry and physics and molecular biology. I can't remember what his major is, but I bet he'll learn some stuff about light. And then I'm excited for him to teach me what he learns. In the meantime, we're going, yeah, we know what it is and that's good enough for us. This leaves us with a couple types of kinetic energy that I want to talk about. And one of them we've already discussed. That was thermal energy. And remember, thermal energy was the, the hmm, maybe we didn't name it thermal energy, but that energy of movement in those molecules, the faster they go, the more thermal energy they have. Do you see how it, it's actually a category of kinetic energy because it's an energy of movement? The other one that I want to talk about briefly, and again, in a detail that is biological, not physicsological, and that is electrical energy. That says electrical. It does, I promise. Electrical energy, I'm, I'm going to give you a definition on this because you might be like, dude, electrical energy is not um, biological. It is in wires and lighting up lights and whatever, running our computers and phones and stuff. True story. And we absolutely are electrical critters. Who knew? <laughs> and if you stick with me, we'll learn way more details about that electrical communication. But electricity is moving charged particles. You see why I put it under the kinetic energy category. Particles. Now think about this for a second. Moving charged particles in a wire are actually electrons moving through the wire, bouncing from atom to atom in the metal, whatever, getting hot and emitting light. Super cool, super interesting. In what are charged particles in biological systems? Ions. And in fact, all your neural function happens because of moving ions in your neurons. So all this, all of this, that's coming at you through the computer is happening because there are a whole bunch of moving ions in my giddy up. There's another one. One more. I have one more for you. It is another, still a form of kinetic energy, but I want this in your, um, in your whatever pile of things. I want it in your pile, please. Sound. Sound energy is, it is the movement of molecules. It's the movement of, well, I mean, I guess if we were underwater, we can still hear sounds underwater. And it's the movement uh, through like sound waves that hit our ears and then our the, that is translated into sound in our brain. But it's movement, it's waves, it's actual like, 
Have you ever stood in front of a really, really loud speaker and you feel like you can feel it? You can feel the sound? It actually is these air molecules are moving in waves because of the, I don't know how we generated that sound, like whatever vibrations the vibe feel when you're talking, there's vibrations that are being generated that are moving the air molecules that hit your eardrum and translate a message into your brain. Okay, for our, I'm going to give you uh, the things that we're going to spend most of our time on today. Probably most of it is chemical energy. I'm going to throw light in there as well. Because the light energy is um, going to fuel photosynthesis and it's, it's the starting point for all energy in living systems. Okay, how do you feel? All right, we'll um, talk about some of the rules of energy next.